Welcome back to class. Today, we'd like to start by welcome Keo. She's new, she was on our wait list. So thank you for joining us today, Keo. And Hello. she's also created a little tree over there, a little banana tree. About where do we wanna go in terms of direction? So right now we've kind of got like a little farm, a little forest. Is there any sort of grand picture that we wanna paint here with our world? Something would, that would be interesting would be that path, you know, to form some sort of entry path to each section of the trail where you can choose to maybe go to a difference, just kind of create like that, that foundation of where to go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like we maybe want to build like a trail where we walk through and we get to kind of explore everybody's creations. That sounds great. The first thing I'd like to go through is grouping objects. So if you grab your hand tool and click outside of your tree, and then drag through your tree and grab all the elements, including the fruit, you'll see that it has grouped into a large square. And it's okay, a lot to try one. to catch everything. Easy it to is. miss stuff. And actually don't go cool. for the fruit because the fruit is a grabbable object. And so I forgot, oh. we don't wanna grab the fruit. We wanna grab everything but the fruit. And so to unselect okay. fruit, what you're gonna do is after you've selected everything and you've accidentally selected a fruit or two, drag through. So click outside again and drag through and unselect the object that you wanna unselect. And if you accidentally unselect something else, you can also click again and then drag through to reselect. And now that you have it all selected, put your hand inside and you'll see to the, if the left, there's kind of an arrow and go ahead and put your joystick to the left and it'll group the object into a single object. And now you can drag your tree oh. around and it will right be separated on. from the fruit, but because the fruit is grabbable, we do need to keep them separate. How are you doing over here, Kale? I lost the grabability of my banana. So it looks like the properties of the banana might've been lost when you grouped them. So you need to go back in and click on it and then click grabbable again. You basically have to un undo the setting because sometimes the setting like under motion, you go to interactive and you'll have to reselect and unselect. So I clicked physics and then clicked grabbable and that allowed it to fix it. So now we have these trees and I'm gonna go quickly make a little grove of orange trees over here. If you wanna make a grove of pickle trees, Verka, and if you wanna add maybe a couple more to yours, let's try and make these trees similar, but remember the tools we used last time where we were able to duplicate and then resize them so that they have some individuality. Now we're gonna go ahead right. and edit the group. So what you wanna do is have a single tree, put your hand inside, then press forward. So once mm -hmm. you have that yellow box around, you're gonna press forward on your joystick, which towards the properties, which is those ellipses or the three dots. When you see that mm -hmm. properties okay. panel, in properties at the top, oh, nice. there is like a backward C shape with an arrow going into it. It says press to zoom in or out of this group. So we're gonna zoom into the group by clicking the button. And once we've zoomed in, we can now Ooh. edit this object without like affecting it as a grouping. So it stays as a group. We can now change it. And so remember, we're making all these trees, but we want them to be a little bit unique. So what we can do is we can adjust the tree. So I'm gonna make one of my orange trees have three little bloops on it. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of the group. And as you duplicate your trees, what I want everybody to think about is how is this path going to go through their forest? So think about where are we going to be oh. building this pathway for people to walk through? And what is that user experience like? The properties board is in my tree. So, you so can I'm trying grab to work move, around. You can move the properties board, the board just like you can an object. When you put your hand in, you'll see the yellow box. Oh, yeah. And then grab the pointer trigger. And there you go. I can envision a path leading from chaos to egg rolls. Then you come over to my orange garden, and then we go to the pickle garden, and then maybe we end up back here at Gwen's place here. And uh, so, so we're kind of creating this sort of pathway they're gonna walk along, and that's pretty cool. We'll get into making paths in a minute, but I'd like to start our class today by going through some gizmos and some other unique items that we'll be able to work with. So we're gonna talk about gizmos. So underneath the shapes, you'll see the word gizmos on the left. Go ahead and click on that, because we're gonna pull out each of these items. So we've got a trigger, we have a door. Door's pretty big. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Woo! Cool. We're gonna pull okay. out some text. Ooh, text. We're gonna pull out a spawn point. So 
What you see is the door. This is a doorway into other worlds. Imagine you've created this forest, but you want to link it to some other story or some other place. When people get to the end of their journey through the forest, you could have one of these doorways and they'd press a button and they'd then be teleported to your next world. So what I want you to do is put your hand inside the door, press up to get the properties menu. And once you have the properties menu, you're going to see it says world ID, the plaza. And from there you can press change. Now, if you press change, you might not see much there because it's based on how many worlds you have. So you might see like our other classroom environment. But as you build your own worlds, you're gonna see them all populated here. So now that we all know how to use the door, let's go ahead and grab that with our trigger and pull down on the joystick to delete it since we're not gonna be using it right now. So grab your text box and on your text box, open up the properties menu, just like we did with the door, is write in one thing that you'd like to learn in this class. So I wrote down respawn because I'd like to teach you guys how to respawn players. Movable animal. Nice. Egg roll wants to open a box. It looks like you need to press enter or return after you've typed in. Oh. Okay. Hey, look at there. Floor plan. All right. So is that like building a floor plan for a house? Before I put things in, I want to create like the atmosphere. So how would you form areas and like the floor mm -hmm. plan of your world? Grabbing some objects. Like, okay, so imagine this is our our world, right? And then I use okay. the snap tool to get it to be level. So you can see mine are level now. Now that I have that, <sighs> I might consider making this like a pathway to kind of describe where the path is going to be as we plan our game out. Grab the duplicate tool and then do the same thing here. If you go to the bottom, you'll notice there's a gear icon. And if we press the gear icon, you'll see there's one called build settings. And under build settings, you can change the snapping. So right now mine is set to snap every five centimeters, but you could set it to be one meter. You could set it to be even more refined, like one centimeter. Oh. And so that'll define how uh, accurate it is when you're using it. And then I keep my grid snap angle at 45. Do you have to make the change before you make it or can you make those changes after you've made the item? Yeah, you can do it after you've made it. So whenever you wanna use the snap tool, just go in and adjust it however you'd like to use it. And then when you're using the object, it will apply to whatever object you click, no matter when it was created. Go ahead and pull out a just a plain old block. It doesn't have to be any fancy color. It doesn't have to be any fancy size. Just pull out a square. So what I want you to do with this square is make it relatively thin and relatively tall. And then I want you to make it nice and long. So take a look at this one that I just created here. See that? This is what we're trying to create. It's a nice wall that looks like this. Now this is gonna be an invisible wall that our players will not be able to cross. So what we can do is go into our oh. forest path, <laughs> start by making it visible so that we can see it. And so go ahead and kind of define how your path is in your forest. And so I've defined my path over here and then you can continue adding them. What we wanna do now is select all of the walls in your area. And make sure you're not accidentally selecting your trees when you do this. We then want to group our walls. Oh, so the square didn't actually grab the trees. It's just showing you how big the area is. Oh, okay. Yeah. If your trees are grabbed, it will be a little bit more clear that the trees are grabbed. Without selecting your object, put your hand inside of the grouped object and push up on the properties panel. When you have the properties, does it say group two objects at the top left? Now everybody looking at the properties panel, the first thing you're gonna see is it says visible on. Click visible and make okay. it off. Once you've turned it off, awesome. you'll notice that collidable is still on. Oh, so now we have invisible cool. walls and now the players are restricted to this area we've defined. So it says they can only be in this area. So let's go into play cool. mode and I'm going to walk over here because I remember this being, yep. So I'm getting pushed around and then I can continue walking and I can't leave this area. So there's kind of like a wall that I can't cross. Well, we could, it would be helpful to have a path, I guess. Yeah. Like so what we're going to want to do is make a visual path for players to follow next. The next thing we're going to look at now that we've looked at text, we've also looked at door 
is we're going to go ahead and look at trail effects. This is the one that when you grab it and pull it around, you're gonna see an effect. It's the one with the three slashes in it. So it looks like this. This, if you attach it to an object, imagine you attach this to your apple or your pickle or your banana, or I'm not even sure what fruit you have on yours, Agril, but imagine you put <laughs> this in there. When the fruit is moved around by the player, it'll leave this trail behind it. Doesn't really make sense to have it on a fruit, but it's kind of a good example. Oh. You could attach this to your fruit and then wherever it goes, there's a trail that falls behind it. The visual effects, that's the one with the three or four sparkles, it's orange. So go ahead and pull this guy out. Yeah. And if we open the properties on this one, we can see that by default, it puts off this nice poof of smoke. And you'll notice that we can loop it. And so now it'll constantly loop a cloud of smoke. Imagine you made a campfire and it constantly had a little poof of smoke coming off. Now go to the bottom where it says preset, hit default and change it around. There's a bunch of different ones for you to try. You could have these kind of like sparkles that kind of rise. These also look really good on a campfire. And then a as one. you scale this object, <laughs> try scaling the object bigger. And what you'll notice is the effect gets bigger. How do you make this work in your, it goes invisible, right? Well, let's oh. actually go into play mode. So right now it looks kind of like an orange block, but if you go into the player's view, you'll notice you don't see that anymore. You'll just see the effect. Pull out the sound recorder from the gizmos tab. And then I want you to open up the sound recorder and we're gonna see the properties menu. And we're just gonna run through this really basic you're able to record yourself speaking. So here I'm gonna go, hi. <laughs> well, then I'm like, I messed up. So I hit stop and then I can re-record. Hi, and welcome to class. Thanks so much for joining us today. And then I've recorded that. I can now play it and I can just hit play. Hi, and welcome to class. Thanks so much for joining us today. So you guys probably all heard that. And I can yes. increase the volume. I can decrease the pitch, get something. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Running through these sounds, we have play and record. We have looping, which you usually want to have off because we want to trigger this. So we're going to get into today how to trigger actions, but we're going to, okay. if you wanted it to, you could have this constantly loop. So if you wanted to have it just constantly saying the same thing, you could do that. And then Oof. if you go to play on start, you could have it automatically start when the world started. You could set it to global, meaning everyone in the world can see it. The minimum wow. distance that you need to be is one. If you scroll down, you'll notice there's a maximum distance. So notice on the far right, there's an arrow key to go down. And the maximum distance starts at an outrageous 1,000. Go ahead and remove that down to like 10. And then when you play your sound, you have to be really close to it. So if someone was talking, you don't want it to be over playing someone else who's across the game you know, talking to someone else. If we go to the gizmos tab and then go down one, you'll see sounds. If you press sounds, we are presented with three different options here. We have sound effects, background, and music. So from here, we can pull out the sound of crickets chirping. We can pull out a background sound of a, a water or a wind blowing. Yeah, there's music. Um, strolling through the world, listening to some nice jazz or something. That would be nice. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Can we upload our own sounds? The only way to engage your own sounds is via that Gizmos recorder. But please note that if it's okay. copyrighted, your world will get removed if you upload copyrighted content. So try to keep it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> stuff you created, one that looks like a sun and a cloud, it's called the environment. And so I'm a little afraid to see what you guys come up with here, but if you go into the properties, <laughs> kind of just play with it. There's a lot here. I'm gonna go oh, through it daytime, with you, but fog. we can change the daytime. Ooh. We can change how much fog there is. We can decide Ooh, whether- I like the fog. <laughs> yeah, look at all these options. The voice sounds. The voice sounds basically set whether or not it's a close proximity world where you want it to only be people within a couple blocks of you can hear you or if you want it to be where everyone in the world can hear you. So depending on the type of world you're building, that can be very important to set. The grid, you remember that grid we started out on? You can Ooh. turn that off. Yeah, this is really okay. nice. I like this. We have a respawn, we have a script, and we have a trigger. 
So these are the three items left. So if you can pull these three out, we're gonna build a script that allows the player to be respawned. So when they hit this green trigger, the player will be respawned. Ooh. As much as I'd love to have a bunch of these, it gets really complicated having multiple respawns. So everyone, now that you know what this looks like and how to get it, we're gonna go ahead and delete this one. So go ahead and delete your respawn person. And we're all gonna use this one down here. What you're gonna to wanna to note in here is that this one is set to be spawning on start, which means this is where players come when the world starts. And then we have set position only. So this, if you set it to set position only, it's not gonna set gravity and speed. So what I wanna try and do is show you what low gravity looks like with a little bit of uh, slow speed. And so go ahead and press down on your um, return to player mode. So press forward to preview. And you're going to see that we all move a little bit slower, but we can jump way higher. And if you don't know how to jump, it's by pressing Woo! down on the joystick on your right hand. So I'm going to go reset it back to defaults. Now let's all go back to our trigger and our script. And we're going to create the simplest script you'll ever create. It's two lines of code. So I'm confident we can all do this today. So everybody go into the top of your script. After you've opened the properties, you'll see script name. Please rename this respawn with your name at the end. So mine will be respawn lakes. We're gonna go ahead and use our pointer finger, put it inside of the wind world has started, grab and pull, and then pull down on our joystick to delete because we do not need wind world has started in this script. Fifth one down under mm -hmm. events, it says wind trigger is entered by player. Grab that and pull it over to the left side of the screen. Okay. Now it should say wind event trigger enters with player go to the second tab the one that has the four arrows pointing in opposite directions it's called move or motion mm -hmm. okay and what we want to do is scroll down use our arrow to scroll down and then you'll see player motion at the top and it'll say respawn player so go ahead and grab respawn player and put it underneath trigger enter then grab your duplicate tool and pull on player so you can grab the little player and bring it down to where it says parameter so you can now duplicate the player and bring it into respawn player on self so now you should say when event trigger enters with player is received action respawn with player on self imagine we have this green trigger so we all see the green trigger right i'm going to grab yours burka so we have this green trigger oh, okay. <laughs> and there's a player wandering around and they walk into this green trigger. Maybe it's on a doorway perhaps. And when the player enters this trigger, we then know which player has entered the trigger. So we say, okay, let's take that player and let's respawn them. And so what we need to do is define where they're respawning because we don't want to respawn them on the trigger that they've just triggered with. We want to respawn them on a specific location. So go to the far right, there's a hashtag, press that, and you're gonna click new variable. You're gonna select the dropdown, so it says number right now, hit the dropdown arrow and then select object, and, and then click on that box to the right and type in respawn point, so PT or P-O-I-N-T, and then press enter or return, and then press the check box and that will create a new variable that we can now use in our script. We grab okay. the respawn point and we drag that onto self. And now when the player hits the trigger, they're going to respawn wherever that person is. So now that we've set this up, let's go down to our trigger. So go into the properties of our trigger, look at it and notice that it says that it's enabled. So that's on. It says trigger on players, okay. not objects. So we know that this is gonna trigger on a player and then at the bottom, it says attach script. Hit the drop down arrow and then choose the one that's yours. So mine is respawn lakes. And now that you've got that open, you'll see now it says respawn point none. So we don't have a respawn point set. Come to the center of the world with me and we're gonna go to this guy, our respawn point. At the bottom right, you're gonna notice it says reference. There's a little doohickey you can grab. Everybody grab the doohickey. And then when you come down to your trigger, you can put that on the left side and tag that into the respawn point and then it'll then say respawn point spawn point grab your green trigger and we're going to place this inside of our little forest area and to press forward 
and spawn in on the ground in front of you. So see if you press forward on your left joystick. Oh, you did it. <laughs> oh, it put me. Yep, you spawned oh, yeah. in your spawned respawn in point spot. and it teleported you right back. This is so cool because I almost want to put something like that water splash right over the top of that area so people will go there and it'll make them go back to the beginning of something because it's so glowy yeah. and beautiful That's and cool. get this water and then also it'll make them start back over. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> That's a great idea. Fun of it. I think, yeah, let's have yours be the end of the journey. We'll have your spot be the end of the journey. Now, now, uh, Ko and Agril, I want you to grab your squares. Since we're in the middle of the journey, we don't want to respawn players in the middle of their journey. So what we want to do is we want to prepare for the idea that someone might accidentally oh. fall through the world. And so what oh. we're going to do is grab our square, and we're not going to make it super big, but we're going to make it super long and super wide. So that way it fills this whole bottom area. It's like a safety this, net. Exactly. So if someone falls off the world, they're not trapped down here. Have to go. No worries. Thank you so much why. for joining us today, Agril. Yeah, it was wonderful you. seeing you. Practice all this stuff that we I know. This is exciting information. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and lots more to cover. We've just scratched the surface. So I'm looking forward to showing you more. Feel free to come back over the next week. Uh, we're going to hang out for a little bit longer to answer any remaining questions. But thank okay. you guys again so much for being here.